Hi everyone, welcome to this hip opening Hatha practice. So what we're going to look at in this sequence is lots of really nice, fairly gentle but deep stretches to release the hips and the lower back. So the hips are a part of the body that on most people tend to be very, very tight, particularly if you're somebody that sits for your job or you do a lot of um, exercise or fitness types of things that revolve around um, having the legs in that kind of position for a long time. So if you imagine you're sitting at a desk, your legs are in this position. If you cycle, your legs are still in that position. And then if you do a lot of running, it's so the same thing. So we tend to do a lot in our daily life in this kind of modern day times where we are habitually shortening and tightening the hip flexors. So the other thing that happens as well when we sit a lot, and this is also if you, um, if you drive a lot for your, your job or just your life, that we tend to tense up a lot through the glutes and collapse a lot in the lower spine. So just for most people, and I definitely find this um, with my uh, massage clients that I see, is we do tend to all feel that sense of um, tightness and stiffness around the lower back and a lot of tightness and stiffness and sometimes even pain through the hip area. Sometimes that translates down the back of the legs as well. So most people, when you talk to them, if they do lots of cycling or lots of running or they sit all day long and you say, you know, do you stretch? Do you do anything um, to sort of lengthen and loosen those parts of the body? They'll normally say no. You know, and most people that are runners um, or cyclists, they tend not to um, dedicate that much time for stretching. So this practice is really for, for you guys to be able to use maybe at the end of a run, at the end of a cycle, or particularly at the end of a day if you've sat at a desk all day. So what happens if we don't, um, if we don't stretch the hips is we start to get problems, um, things like sciatica or just chronic um, hip pain. So we have a muscle that sits all the way underneath the many layers of glute muscles called the piriformis and it's like a, a little short band of muscle that runs all across and that muscle sits on top of the sciatic nerve. So when that muscle gets tight it starts to press on the sciatic nerve and this is when we experience um, sciatic pain which is first people could be very very different it can be a shooting pain down the side of the leg it can be a constant aching it can be loss of sensation in parts of the leg as well so if you talk to somebody if you've had sciatica it's, it's really really um really distressing it's really uncomfortable it means for a lot of the time you cannot sit in a way that is comfortable for you and then it really limits your mobility as well so it's really really important to stretch the hips continuously so the other benefit to your hip practice is that from an energetics point of view, from an emotional point of view, the hips are where we tend to store our emotions, our stress, everything that we are um, processing throughout the day in terms of uh, relationships, interactions with people, things that um, maybe situations that we don't like that we have an aversion towards, all of that information gets registered in the body somehow. And without a regular, um, can they call it a detox practice if you like, um, of releasing that tension from the body, it all builds up. And that contributes to the tightness in that area as well. So we're going to work slowly and we're going to work mindfully in this practice, but you might find that it feels in some ways more intense than a really strong and fast-paced vinyasa practice because we're anatomically working with a part of the body that's chronically tight in most of us. And then energetically, we're working with a part of the body that homes these strong emotions. So sometimes people experience in certain hip opening postures, um, all of those emotions rushing to the top. Sometimes people feel immediate anger, immediate sadness, irritation, and it normally manifests in a, in a sense of wanting to get out of the pose. So what we try and do is really breathe into that. It's not that we're trying to breathe through pain. So there is a difference uh, in yoga practice. We never breathe through pain in the body. 
uh, particularly the joints. So if there's any issues going on with the knees, we don't just think, okay, ooh, I breath, I'm going to breathe through it. Pain is an indication that there's something wrong with the pose, that there's something that isn't agreeing with the body. Pain is the body's way of telling us that we need to change something about that posture. But what we do breathe through is the mental discomfort, the resistance to the pose. So in the beginning, it's hard to tell the difference. It's hard to tell whether it's the body telling us that something isn't quite right or whether it's an emotional blockage. So this really comes with time and a lot of practice and kind of getting to know yourself as well. So what are your triggers um, in terms of postures, in terms of energetics? So I know for me, because my shoulders are so tight and I kind of acknowledge that's probably a, like a heart chakra thing, that when I'm in strong shoulder opening practices, poses, I just want to come out straight away. It brings a lot of stuff up to the surface that I don't always want to deal with. But I know that about myself now, so I try and sit with it for a little bit longer, I try and breathe. But then when I'm doing poses where I'm on my knees, um, lunges and things like that, I've got problems with my knees at the moment. And that pain and that discomfort there is just telling me that that's not suitable for my body and that I need to change. But it's not an emotional thing. So I hope that makes sense. So you will kind of feel into it. We're going to work very safely. I would recommend if you're new to yoga, um, you know that you feel stiff or you have got any issues with the knees, I would be grabbing yourself quite a few props to help you with this practice today. So some blankets, um, maybe some cushions, uh, anything to make the floor a bit more comfortable. So usually yoga mats are pretty thin and if you've got a floorboard, um, floorboards underneath you like I have, I would be looking to really um, pad that out with some blankets or maybe even another yoga mat if you have one. Okay, so maybe hit pause, go and get what you need uh, for the practice. Uh, you also want to be warm, so we're not going to be moving very quickly for this practice, so make sure that you're, um, you've got enough layers on to keep you warm because that will help the body um, to stretch and unwind as well. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're going to start, as we always do in my classes, with the breath. So I will try always not to skip this. Um, it's such an important part of yoga. And particularly when we're working with areas like the hips, we really need the breath to help us with these postures. So I would like you to do this in Shavasana so that you can just begin to relax, begin to tell your body that it's time to start letting go and it's time for relaxation. So again, if I show you as I normally do the different ways that you can take Shavasana, because it doesn't always suit everybody to do the traditional corpse pose. So corpse pose, as the name suggests, is we try and lie down uh, and emulate a dead body. So we bring ourselves onto our backs. We're in a long line and then we bring the feet to the width of the mat and knock the toes away. Give your hips a little bit of a wriggle, head comes down to the floor and the palms of the hands turn up towards the ceiling. So for me this is personally isn't a very comfortable position because I have lordosis um, of my lumbar spine. So that curvature starts to cause problems and I feel it's not comfortable for my pelvis. So I like to take goddess to start off with where you bring the soles of the feet together and the knees come out to the side and then sometimes I will just pick up the hips and scoot the tailbone under and that normally feels quite nice for me and then hands can rest then maybe to the belly maybe again palms can be up or sometimes it's nice to take the arms overhead and you get a nice bit of stretching there for the chest as well so if that doesn't suit We've got the third option, which normally suits everybody, is to bring the feet to the width of the mat and then knock the knees together. And again, hands can come where it feels best for you. If you want to draw your chin to your chest, give the shoulders a good wriggle out. And again, rock the hips until they find that comfortable position. And then we're going to close the eyes. And I just want you to start to bring your mind into this present moment. So to do that, you just start to become really present to the sensations in the body. 
to the sounds in the room. Really present to your breath. And as you lie here in this relaxed state, just starting to get an idea of how you feel today. How does your body feel? Maybe even acknowledging parts of the body individually that feel tense or tight or tired even. Checking in with how your breath feels. So noticing the journey of the breath, the quality of the breath. Noticing if this is the first time you've thought of your breath in a little while. And then once we tune into the breathing, we notice, you know, maybe it's, it's really shallow, it's really short and sharp. Maybe the breath just isn't moving through the body. And noticing how your mind feels. So what state is your mind in? Does it feel busy and distracted? Does it feel agitated? Does it feel quite content, quite in the present moment? You're just starting to draw in all this information about how we are at this moment in time. So this is such a nourishing and beautiful practice to do for ourselves because so much of the time we're so busy that we have no idea what is going on in our body, in our mind, in our emotional landscape. And this information can start to give us an idea of what needs to change, what needs some TLC. If you feel absolutely exhausted, if your body feels tight and tired and tense and your mind feels busy and distracted, this is an indication that maybe we haven't had the time for ourselves that we really need you haven't been doing too much. Has life been really full on for us? And just acknowledging that. So use all of this information now to start to get a sense of what you would like your intention or affirmation to be for your practice today. So in yoga we call this a sankalpa. So maybe thinking about the way that you would like to feel at the end of your practice. You might want to include someone else in your intention as well. Sometimes if we're not sure, especially if we're new to the practice, you can just think, may my yoga practice today be of benefit to myself and to those around me. And now once we've got our intention in place, really anchored into our practice, we're going to start to really breathe now. So I want you to breathe really deeply, sending your breath all the way down into your belly. So let your belly expand. And then 
exhale, we're going to sigh the breath out the mouth. We're going to do a few of those. Inhale, breathe to the belly. Exhale, sigh the breath out the mouth. Last one, inhale. Now we're going to close the mouth, we're going to breathe through the nose, but we're going to breathe just as deeply, so breathe to the belly, let the belly expand, and now share the breath with your rib cage and your chest, so it's like a balloon being inflated. And as you exhale, gently drawing belly to spine, we're going to squeeze the breath out, and it's like that balloon being deflated. And then inhale, full expansion. Exhale, full release. So staying with that and enjoying that feeling. So this is one of the things that people love most about yoga. This time that we get with our breath, it feels so good for the body when you start to breathe in this way. Feel the body being nourished by the breath, getting the breath into all those nooks and crannies. So fresh prana, fresh, fresh life force energy into the body. And the exhales, we're getting rid of all of that stale energy. So our breath becomes like a detox practice in and of itself. Because we're concentrating on the breath and the breath alone, the mind begins to calm and quieten. And that brings with it a sense of relaxation as well. So just a few more rounds of breath in this way. And if you can, if it feels available to you now, I'd like you to start to introduce that ujjayi breath, so breath of sound. So the breath now starts to sound raspy or oceanic. So to create this, we constrict the back of the throat as we breathe in and out. So the mouth is closed, we're breathing through the nose, but you actually imagine that you're more breathing through the throat. So it creates that loud breath. Two more breaths. Lovely. And then start to blink the eyes open. We're going to stay on our back, so I'm going to come back down to join you. And the first thing that we're going to do here after that sort of beginning Shavasana is we're just going to gently draw the knees in towards the chest. I want you to do that really gently, really carefully, and then begin to rock from side to side. So every posture that we're going to take today in this class, what I want you to do is really be in the posture. So as soon as you make the shape, I want you to, to ask yourself, what does that feel like? You know, where is the tension in this pose? So maybe as soon as we draw the knees to the chest, we realise how nice that actually feels to have that massage for the spine. But maybe it highlights some stiffness immediately in the lower back or the hips. So it's again, it's that checking in. We're starting to get an idea of what is actually going on in our body. And then from here, some knees are going to stay in, hands to the top of the knees. Keep the knees together and we're going to circle. So quite small, you're just massaging the spine into the mat. So again, as I mentioned before, if you've got floorboards underneath you, this might feel a little bit uncomfortable, so you might want to pad underneath or on top of your mat with a blanket. So we've gone a few times one way, a few times the other way. And then we're going to split the knees apart and make larger circles to so take the knees out and then draw them back together. 
again, how does that feel? We're asking ourselves, where is that tension? So maybe now we start to realise the inner thighs are quite tight. There's a stiffness in the hip joints as we're doing that. And then bringing knees back together. Okay, and then going to come into, and this is just nice and gently because we're not really warmed up yet, but we're going to take a little gen gentle happy baby. So from here, if you bring your hands now to the inner thighs, we're going to flex the feet and we're going to start to draw the feet up towards the ceiling and then take the knees as wide as you can without overstretching. And then I would just for now keep your hands to the inner thighs unless it doesn't feel too strained for you to bring the hands up to the toes. Okay, but you need to make sure that you're not overstretching. Chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor, and it's just a little bit of rocking again from side to side. So checking in with this posture. So how does this one feel? Does this feel nice? Does it feel like it's creating space? Where do you feel the tension in this pose? And then where is the breath? So have we stopped breathing? So bring that ujjayi breath back in. Feet together, knees together, hug yourself back into that little ball and a little bit of rocking again. Okay, from here we're going to bring the soles of the feet down to the mat and we're just going to come into our half pigeon pose. So you're going to cross the right leg over the left thigh and we're going to make this number seven position with the leg. So to begin with I just want you to place left hand to left thigh, right hand to right inner thigh Relax your shoulders and chin to chest. We're going to apply a little bit of pressure to that right thigh. You can flex the right toes back towards the right knee unless that causes pain in the knee, in which case relax your foot. Now some of you, depending on how tight your hips are, you might just want to stay there and breathe. If you feel okay to work a little bit more deep, then bring the legs in towards you. And then you're going to take your right hand between the legs and interlace the hands behind the back of the left thigh. So try not to be in like a tummy curl. We're not lifting the head and shoulders off the mat. Heads relaxed, shoulders relaxed. You might want to place a blanket or a block underneath the head to make this a bit more comfortable. And we're going to breathe. So I want you to breathe into that right hip. So this pose that we're working on here is one of the best poses to stretch what I was describing earlier, that piriformis muscle. So the sensation in this pose, if we've got it right, is it feels like somebody's got their elbow in your right glute muscle. You can deepen the pose at any time by just drawing the legs in further, flexing the toe back, or you can bring the hands to the top of the shin and that will work a little bit more deeply as well. So maybe closing the eyes, and again, I want you to feel into the pose. So trying to avoid letting the mind wander off to stories associated with the posture. So bring the mind back to the here and the now, the sensations in the body and the breath. Making sure you're not transferring that hip tension to your face. So let's relax the forehead and let's unclench the jaw. So we've got two more breaths. Slowly now, start to replace the left foot to the mat, but keep your right leg crossed over. We're going to add a twist into this, so take the arms away from the body and start to draw your right foot down towards the mat. doesn't matter if it doesn't reach, you can place a block under there if you want to. And then turn your head the other way. So you're going to hold here, try and relax the hips, relax the shoulders and breathe into the hips. breath. 
Bring your head back to centre first and then roll that left foot back. We're then going to disconnect the right leg, hands to the back of the right thigh, and we're going to extend the leg up towards the ceiling. Okay, so it's never a good idea to press the back of the knee out. Okay, so always have a softness to the knees, particularly if you're hyper, if you have hyperextension. So you'll just naturally do that anyway. So soften the knee. And then just play around with circling the ankle a few times one way, a few times the other. Draw the toes back towards you and then point the toes away. Okay, hug that right knee in. And I'm going to do all of that now on the other side. So we're starting off the left foot crosses over the right thigh. We're going to just hold there. It's just starting to feel into the left hip. So usually with hips, there's a bit of a difference between two sides. Sometimes this can be a huge difference. And this normally indicates that there's a postural imbalance in the body or something that we're doing on one side of the body more than the other. So this might become more obvious as we move through the different poses today. Okay, and then when you're ready to, bringing the legs in, threading the hand through if you want to, interlace the hands behind the back of the right thigh. And then you decide how deeply, so you can flex the toes, you can bring hands up to the shin. Make sure that the shoulders are relaxed and the chin once again is down towards the chest. Closing the eyes and again, I want you to become really present to this pose. So where are those sensations? How does the body feel? And can you send your breath to that tightness? So ujjayi breath, inhale, try and create a little bit of space. Exhale, try and let it go. So again, just noticing the face. Let's relax the jaw and the forehead behind the eyes. more breaths. And then slowly opening the eyes, drawing that foot down to the mat, hands out to the side and we'll take that twist. So this time the left foot is journeying to the right hand side and then we'll turn the head the opposite way. So you'll have gone too far if the shoulder starts to lift up off the mat. Okay, so you want shoulders anchored so that you can really relax through the rib cage and through the chest. And then you're just allowing gravity to draw the legs down and we're breathing. One more big breath in, big breath out, and then let's roll that right foot back to centre, disconnect the left leg, stretching it up, and again we don't press that knee out, so soft through the knee, finding a stretch that feels right for you. So trying to bring some softness to your practice. So one thing I notice a lot in group classes is pretty much the habit of everyone is, is to overstretch. We get very, um, what do you say, yang about our practice. So we're in a world where we have everything straight away. We want quick results. We want that instant gratif gratification. And that really starts to become obvious in people's yoga practice. So even in something like this, it's kind of chilled, people throwing the leg in, you know, we get hunchy, you're trying to get as much stretch as you can. You know, the body doesn't respond well to that. If you stretch too much, particularly at the start of the practice, you have this thing called stretch reflex, where your body basically locks you out 
of being able to stretch deeper later on. So just soft it. Use your breath. The breath will help you work more deeply, not just forcing. And again, let's circle out the ankle. There might be a little bit of crunching on it, it is for me. So go a few times one way, a few times the other. Flex the toes back and then point the toes away. Lovely. And then hug that left knee in. We're going to hug the right knee back in. I want you to just hold there in that position. It's like upside down child's pose. And then just notice so how does it feel now compared to when we first draw, drew our knees into our chest. So have you made any changes? How does the body feel now? So we're going to start to bring ourselves up to seated. So I want you to take your time. You can either... If you've got the padding underneath you and your spine is okay, you can take hands to the back of the thigh and you can rock and roll yourself. It's kind of nice to do a few times to get that massage. Or you're here and you're just going to roll, roll to the side, press the hand into the floor and bring yourself up to seated that way. Okay. So we're going to take a seated hip opening uh, pose, but just give yourself a couple of breaths to feel settled. Now you're in an upright position, so relaxing the shoulders, maybe giving the head a little bit of a side to side. You can even roll the shoulders if that feels like it might be nicer. So we want to kind of into a cross leg position if you can, and then start to draw the feet away from you and flex the toes back. So you want to create a little triangle of space. And then just give yourself a little rock on the sit bones till you find centre there as well. And then from there, the palms of the hands are going to face forward. We're going to take a really nice long breath in, reach the arms up above the head. Interlace the hands, lift them away. And then as you exhale, we're going to come forward all the way down to the floor. Release the hands. And then you can bring the forearms down. You can be on fingertips or palms, whatever works for you. And then start to bring your head down towards the, the mat or the floor. And we're going to hold here and breathe. So try not to collapse into your upper spine. So you might want to take a few inhales where you lengthen the spine long and then exhale, draw yourself back down. The shoulders are away from the ears. And you can really breathe here into the back of the heart. So filling that space between the shoulder blades. And exhales maybe bring us a little bit further forward in the pose. And we're gonna take two more breaths. Walk the hands back together now, interlace the hands, press the hands away. A big inhale brings you all the way back up and an exhale, we release the arms. We're going to rock back and we're going to change the legs. Flexing the feet, creating that space between the legs and the pelvis, resetting. So as I mentioned before, that difference between the two sides of the body. So this might be an indication as you come forward into this one. And also as a habit, we tend to always cross the legs the same way. So when you take the other foot in front, you feel there's a little bit of a tightness there. So work into this side a little bit more slowly, remembering to back it off and soften a little bit more than what we're used to. Palms of the hands forward and inhale. Let's draw the arms up, interlace the hands. Exhale as you come forward. And again, we release the hands and turn the head down to face the floor. So you're feeling into this side, noticing the differences. And then again, we're becoming really present to the pose. So how does the body feel? Tuning into those sensations and breathing into it. So again, you might want to inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, draw yourself down. Breathe to the back of the heart. 
exhale, soften. Two more breaths. Walk the hands back together, reinterlace and press the hands away. Inhale, draws you all the way back up. Exhale, release. So from here, we're going to come into child's pose now. So bring your leg out from underneath you. And then bring yourself to the back of your mat. So we're in a kneeling position. So this is where, as I mentioned before, you might want padding underneath the knees. Or you can pad out the back of the thighs if you've got any knee stuff going on. Take the knees out wide. If you can't be on your knees at all, which some people can't, you come back and take the knees to chest on your back. So we're doing that upside down child's pose. So knees nice and wide, big toes together. And then start to walk your hands and arms out. And then bring the forehead down towards the mat. So you can use a block to rest the forehead on if you prefer. Spread the fingers nice and wide, press into the hands like you're pushing the floor away from you and really draw the tailbone down towards the heels. And again, we're coming back to the breath and we're becoming present to this pose. So how does this one feel? How does the body respond? Where needs the breath? Two more breaths, really soften through the jaw, soften through your face. And then just begin to bring the head up and walk your hands back in towards you. Scoop the knees together and we're going to come up onto the hands and the knees. And we're just take, going to take a couple of cat-cow so cat cow is not to traditionally uh, a stretch for the hips, but it's nice to just mobilise through the spine. So wrists are underneath the shoulders and the knees are underneath the hips. So again, there's a, a tendency to hyperextend and press the elbows forward if you look at my arms. So we're softening the elbows and we're trying not to collapse in the shoulders. So you want to press the floor away, lift up through the rib cage a little bit, but not hyperextending. Okay. Pressing into the fingertips and the knuckles to protect the wrists. And if you find this uncomfortable, if you've got arthritis or just stiff and tired wrists, roll your mat back a few times. If I show you, actually, it's a bit easier. So you roll the front of your mat all the way in and then rest the heel of your hands onto the mat. It can be a nice support for you. So we're going to inhale, start to stretch the belly, lift the tailbone and look forward. So I'm not a big fan of looking up, I think it's a little bit yucky on the neck, okay, so just look forward, and as you exhale, you start the movement from the belly, so the belly hugs in, we round the back up towards the ceiling, and then we tuck the chin in towards the chest, and we inhale, we come back the other way, so I would be just starting this nice and slowly, and again, you're becoming present to your body. So how does the spine feel today? How does the lower back feel? Synchronising breath and movement. Exhaling, we're drawing belly to spine. Inhaling, we're filling the belly, we're filling the lungs, we're filling the chest. Let's take one more exhale, drawing it in. And then coming back to neutral spine. So you can keep the support if you want to for the next one. I'm just going to roll my mat back up. So we're going to come into downward dog now to stretch the whole body. So stretch the spine, the back of the legs, get some space in the lower back. So same instruction, we're pressing into fingertips and knuckles. We're not spinning the elbows forward. 
We're going to tuck the toes, we're going to scoop up through the belly almost like we do in cat, and we're going to lift the knees, lift the hips, and then start to draw the heels down towards the floor. So you might like to pedal the legs here to start to wake up through the hamstrings. You might want to hold in stillness. So again, try not to be too forced with Dharma Dog. It's really easy to just press the back of the knees out, jerk the chest up back, and it becomes really, really too much for the body. So a little bit of a softness in the knees, scoop the belly in and up, soft through the elbows, and we're just gently looking back between the feet, but the rib cage is still fairly lifted. You're pressing the hands into the floor like you're trying to push the floor away. And of course we're breathing, so let's check that we're still breathing. I'm going to take two more breaths. And we're going to look between the hands. So again, this is really up to you what, how you want to do this, and depending on what your body feels like it needs. So you can either, from downward dog, I prefer to bring my toes together to make my leg like one leg. You can pick the right leg up, bend the left knee and then step the foot through or you're in your downward dog, the knees come down and we step the right foot through that way. Okay, so if you're new to yoga, step throughs can be quite hard. So maybe bringing the knees down to do it first. Okay, so we're here now in a lunge position. So I'm just shuffling about because I want my right knee above my right ankle. So make sure you've got that alignment. Hands are going to frame the front foot. I prefer to tuck my back foot to protect my knee. And this is another position where you might want something under that back knee blanket um, or a cushion. And sometimes in lunge position, if you, I don't know if you can feel it, but you've got your sort of tummy area collapsing onto the right thigh. So that can sometimes not feel very nice. Um, it can cause kind of like a discomfort on the diaphragm. So if you're in lunge and that's happening, you walk your hands to the inside of the foot and you'll find a little bit more space for the tummy, okay? So you're very welcome to take your lunge position that way. So we're just gonna hold here and sink down into the hips. So try and really use your breath here. So inhale, find some space. If we're feeling it all the way down that front of the left hip. So I'll take one more breath here, make sure the shoulders are relaxed. And then we're going to rock back and forth. So on your next exhale, we're going to draw the right toes back. If I walk my hands back so you can see, and straighten the right leg. But again, it's not locked. It's just a stretch. We're going to inhale and come back forward, drop into the left hip. Try and lift your chest. Exhale, take it back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Good, one more, inhale forward, exhale back, and then we're going to inhale forward and we're going to stay here, and really press down into your right big toe, draw your belly in and maybe back the pelvis off slightly to give you some space to come up into a supported lunge, so hands onto the um, top of that right thigh, I'm just going to move back so I'm not propping my head off <laughs> the video. Okay, so from there we're dropping down a little bit deeper into that left hip. And we're breathing. Shoulders down the back. Try and draw a little bit in through the tummy so we're not just collapsing into the lower spine. So pulling in a little bit through the front spine. We'll take one more breath. And then we're going to come back down. And this time we're going to put the hands to the inside of the right foot. We're going to walk the right foot a little bit wider to the side of the mat. And we're going to hold here. So working into lizard or dragon pose. So again, if I lift my arms, you can see. So we've got the foot nice and wide. And we're keeping the foot facing forward for today. So sometimes we'll work a bit more deeply with the foot turned out. But we're going to keep it straight. And then it's up to you, you can either just stay here, you might want to come off the knee, make it a little bit deeper, 
you can bring the forearms down as well if that feels available to you. Shoulders down the back, crown of the head down towards the floor and we're breathing. Few more breaths. Start to bring yourself back up, release the back knee if you had it lifted, and walk the right foot back to centre. We peel the right toes back and find that hamstring stretch again, a half hanumasana splits pose, and just hold here. Bringing your awareness back to your breath. And again, tuning into this present moment. How does the body feel? What are the sensations in this pose? I'm going to replace the foot. Hands are going to frame the front foot. You can either bring this right leg back to tabletop or we're coming back into downward dog and we're pedaling the legs out. And just noticing how downward dog feels compared to the last time we were in it. So have we made any differences? How are the hips feeling? And then we'll come and do all that on the left side. So we're looking forward. Bring the feet together. Bend the right knee. Lift the left leg. And then you can step the foot through. Or knees down. And the left foot comes through. So we're going to bring the right knee down to the mat and we're lining up the left knee above the left ankle and we're holding there. So remembering what I said before about the tummy, if this feels uncomfortable, shift that arm inside and that might make the pose a little bit kinder. Take that rocking movement again. So inhale to the chest. Exhale, peel the left toes back, straighten the left leg. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, take it back. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale forward. Exhale, rock it back. And then inhale forward. And we're going to set up coming into that lunge position. So strong through the left big toe this time, draw the belly in, take the pelvis back slightly and then walk yourself up into that lunge position, hands to the top of the thigh, you can press the hands into the thigh to lift up through the spine and then really drop down now into that right hip flexor. Deep breaths. So again, become present to the pose, the sensations, and remember that we don't breathe through pain in the knee. So if that, particularly that right knee is hurting, we come out, you pad it out. If that still doesn't help, just sit the pose out. It's not worth creating drama in the knee. One more breath. And release. The hands to the inside of the foot. We're walking the left foot over. Keeping the feet, the toes facing forward and then dropping down into that lizard pose. So you just work as deeply as feels right for you. And again, there's that difference between the two sides. So you might not want to come down onto the forearms this side. There's the option again to lift the back foot if you want to. And breathe. So this particular pose is one of those hip ones that can be a little bit confronting in terms of emotions. So use your exhalations to release whatever this pose is bringing up for you. Two more breaths. And then 
and start to make your way back up. Shuffle that leg back to centre. We're going to flex the toe back, toes back. Find length through the left hamstring. So you can work as deeply into this as feels right for you. Some people will bring the forehead down to deepen the stretch. But again, we're not pressing the back of the knee out. Soft knee. Relax shoulders and breathe. My breath. Let's bring the foot down, hands frame the front foot. Let's lift the back knee and come back to downward facing dog. Give those legs a good pedal out. You give the head a little bit of a shake. And now tuning in once again to how the body's feeling. What difference does have you made to how the body feels? And we're just going to take a little reset moment. So the knees are going to come down and we're going to come to child's pose. So forehead resting down. Give the time a chance to come back to the breath and just let the body process. All of the stuff that's come up for us in those previous poses. Two more breaths. Maybe exhale the breath out the mouth. Begin to lift the face, walk the hands back in. Okay, so we're going to come into a seated hip opener now. So there's a couple of ways that you can come into this pose. So I'll demonstrate the first one. I would say if you've got dodgy knees, do the second version of coming into this pose. So you can come into it from hands and knees. So you're going to cross the right leg over the left. You want to get the thighs as close in towards each other as possible and then bring the feet out to the side. And then we're sitting the tailbone back between the feet. Okay, so from the front, it looks like this. Okay, you're going to do a little bit of wriggling and then we're going to stay there. So if you can't transition that way, you would bring your legs out in front. We cross the right leg over and then bend the left leg in and you're there. Sometimes this pose just won't happen for whatever reason. Knee stuff, hip stuff. So what you would do is you keep your right leg over but you would straighten your left leg long. Okay, Still working with the same area, it's just a little bit kinder on that bottom leg. Okay, so give yourself some time to find the shape that works for you. We're going to relax the outside edge of that right foot. Give yourself a wriggle and then just begin by bringing the hands to the soles of the feet or sole of the foot if you've only got one leg over. Roll the shoulders back, chin to chest and breathe. So you want to get a sense of just dropping the hips down into the mat. more of a case of letting go in this posture than really trying to achieve anything. So we're just trying to soften through the hips. So you've got a choice here. You, you can just stay here if that feels like it's deep enough for you and you're kind of getting somewhere with the breath. Or if you want to deepen the stretch a little bit more, you start to walk your hands forward. I prefer to take them wide so that I don't collapse into my upper back. So taking them out to the side and then bringing the head down. And you really need your breath for this one. It's such an intense pose. So nice ujjayi breaths. Good. 
closing the eyes and really tuning in to the here and the now. So how does the body feel? Where could you send the breath? Start to lift the face and start to walk yourself back to that beginning position. Hands come back to the soles of the feet and really lift and lengthen up through your spine. And take a big breath in through the nose. Big exhale out the mouth. So, a couple of choices to come out. So you can come out the way that you came in if you did the first option. So you start to tip yourself forward again. And then you're just going to release that leg back and the other leg in front. And then sit yourself back in between the feet. Or you're taking the legs out in front first. You're crossing the left foot over the right leg. And we're swinging the leg back. Or you're going to keep that right leg out in front. Again, let's relax that outside foot. Give yourself a good wriggle. And again, we remember that there's a difference between the two hips. So one side you might take both of the legs, one side you might have to do one. If this hip's really sitting up quite high and there's a huge space between the hip and the floor, I would be padding that out with a block, um, a pillow or a blanket to make it more comfy. So starting with the hands to the soles of the feet. Drop the shoulders down the back, breathe. So then if you're ready, if you want to, you start to walk the hands out to the side and start to tilt the head forward. Closing the eyes and becoming really present to this pose, to your breath. Take two more breaths. And then start to walk your hands back in. Hands come back to the soles of the feet and just sit here and breathe. Big breath in through the nose, big exhale out the mouth. So from here, you can, um, now I would just transition out of it this way, so just draw the foot up. And then I'm going to bring myself into Baddha Konasana, so the soles of the feet together. Scoop the feet in as close as you can towards the pelvis, and again, give yourself a good rock from side to side. You're going to open out the soles of the feet. We're going to inhale and lift up through the chest and then exhale, start to come forward. So this is just a nice one after all of that hip stuff. So you can look forward or you can look down. And again, we try not to round the upper back, so keep shoulders down, keep spine long. You can apply a little bit of pressure into the legs if it feels okay to do so. But again, just be aware of that yang forcing of the legs down, so keep it soft. A 
few more breaths. So try and inhale, find some space. And exhale, find some length. Slowly start to bring yourself back up. You're going to hug the knees in together. And then from here, if you bring yourself into the middle of the mat, we're going to roll down onto our backs. And once again, come back to that upside down child's pose, knees into chest, and rock yourself from side to side. We're going to come back to those circles, the so hands to the top of the knees, knees stay together, circling the lower back. A few times one way, a few times the other. Making those larger circles, taking the knees out, drawing them back together. And then placing the soles of the feet to, mat, to the mat, arms out to the side. Let's take knees to the left and turn and look to the right. Inhale the knees to centre, exhale the knees to the right, turn and look to the left. Try and relax your shoulders and your chest. And then bring the knees back to centre. Good. Okay, and then we're at very well deserved final relaxation, Shavasana. So you take any of those options from the start, legs can come out long. Soles of the feet can come together, or you can bring feet to the width of the mat and knees knock together. So choosing what feels best for you. Palms of the hands facing up to the sky, relaxing the shoulders and chin to chest. Begin to soften and relax into the mat beneath you. I want to start to get this sensation of two things happening at the same time. So the body is becoming heavy and the mat or the floor is coming up to support you. The Shavasana corpse pose is the ultimate pose of surrender. There shouldn't be anywhere in your body, in your mind, that needs to be holding the body in place. So try and just let your body soften. Let go of that urge that we all have to doing something, changing something. So you can relax the control of the breath. Now the breath just returns to doing its natural, normal thing. Let your mind rest at that space between the eyebrows. scan through the body areas of tension or gripping and send your awareness there, send your mind there. And can you just tell them to let go? In Shavasana we just abide in this sense of relaxation and stillness and we allow ourselves, we give ourselves the permission to enjoy that relaxation. It's really sacred and precious time for ourselves, where we don't have to be anywhere, we don't have to do anything, and most importantly, we don't have to be anyone or anybody else. And relax the space behind the heart.
face the jaw. got time feel free to stay in Shavasana for a little bit longer. If not we start to think about moving the body. So start small wriggling fingers, maybe wriggling the toes, taking the head from side to side. It's quite nice after Shavasana to take a full body stretch so lengthen the legs out long, point through the toes and reach the arms up overhead. And you can take a nice big breath to the belly and a big exhale out the mouth. Big breath in. Big exhale. Walk the feet in. And we'll come back one more time to knees into chest. And again, checking in with how you feel. How does that pose feel compared to the very start of the session today? coming up in a way that suits you so if you've got blood pressure issues or you get dizzy roll to the side first pause there for a few breaths sometimes people prefer to just bring themselves up that way so I'll leave that decision to you and we're coming in to see Kasana easy seat again facing the front hands resting onto the lap somewhere shoulders down chin to chest Breathe, feeling once again into the body, how the body feels, how the mind feels, how the breath feels. So checking into all of those things that we checked in with at the very beginning. Raising your mind back to that intention that you created at the start and have you honoured your practice, honoured your intention in your practice? I'm going to draw the palms of the hands together into your Anjali Mudra, forehead bows towards the fingertips. And just take a moment here to dedicate all of the good energy of your practice towards taking this sense of peace, relaxation, and stillness into the rest of your day or your evening, wherever you're at in your day. So that our time on the mat has that positive effect on the things that we think, say, and do. Take a big breath in and as you exhale, we bow forward and seal our practice. And coming up when you're ready and we are there okay really really hope you enjoyed this please leave feedback any questions any requests and i will try and get back to you okay see you next time namaste